So let's talk about what we mean by spatial data models. A spatial data model is simply a way of representing the real world in an information system. And in this example, we see what's meant to represent the real world on the, on the um, left, although it's actually just a, um, a photograph, an aerial image of the real world. And on the right, we have a representation of that as a spatial data model. Um, what we're just seeing here is the geographic side of it, the kind of um, visual side of it, where the different polygons and, and uh, other features are located. That's kind of the G of the GIS side. But there's also an IS side behind it, an information system side behind it, and that's where the data is stored. If we think about what we're really doing, we're taking the real world and then we're trying to represent it as a spatial data model. That spatial data model has a geographic coordinate, as is shown in this map, and it also has an information system coordinate represented by the database, where each feature on the map is represented by a row, and each type of, type of information about that feature, such as the area or what type of um, land cover it is, is represented by a column. When we open up this um, attribute table, what we don't see is the data structure. The data structure is telling the computer how to draw that data model. And it's doing this with a series of X and Y coordinates. If it's just one point, it's one X and one Y coordinate, a line, a series of X and Y coordinates, and a polygon, a series of X and Y coordinates in which the first and last coordinate are the same. And what we don't really see at all is the machine code, the, the stuff behind it which um, encodes it so that it can be used on a computer. Um, GIS information is organized into layers. So all of one type of thing, such as roads, would be on one layer. And the nice thing about this is that we can then turn those layers on and off or include them or not include them or symbolize them in a certain way, depending of what our preferences are for the map. But all of those layers to together are meant to represent the real world or the surface of the Earth. So when we're uh, talking about coordinates, we just are, that, that's the geographic way of uh, modeling the real world. And um, we basically just have a series of X and Y coordinates or latitude and longitude coordinates, which um, represent different things like a point line or polygon. A polygon is shown here and we can see it's a series of coordinates where this, this uh, point here is both the first and the last coordinate. So just by even looking at the list of coordinates, we would know that this is a polygon because it closes in on itself and, um, and those two values are the same. There could be attributes stored in the attribute table. Since this, since this one outline would just be one row in the attribute table, we would just have one value for each of these. We can um, use geographic coordinates, which would be latitude and longitude, or we could use Cartesian coordinates, which would be X and Y coordinates. If we start with geographic coordinates and project them, then we would be in the X and Y coordinate system. And that's how we would uh, represent those points that represent the graphic side of our GIS or the geographic side. One thing to keep in mind in doing all this is that um, if we're representing things from survey data, that um, we have to adjust for the difference between the geographic North Pole and the magnetic North Pole. If we're using a compass, it does not point to the geographic North Pole, which is located at a, um, at a um, latitude of 90 degrees. Um, currently, the geographic North Pole is approximately here. It wanders around over time, and the geographic North Pole, uh, I'm sorry, the magnetic North Pole, which is, which is represented by these um, red dots here and, and wanders around over time, um, is the result of the way that the Earth spins on its axis and the liquid iron and nickel core of the Earth creating a magnetic field. That's why our compasses point towards the uh, magnetic North Pole. So in 2019, it would be right here. And as you can see, that's offset from the geographic pole. And we have to adjust for that if we're um, entering um, X and Y coordinates based on, on readings that we take with a compass. So once again, the spatial data model takes the real world breaks it down into a geographic side and an information system side. The geographic side is what we see on the map. The information system side is what's in the attribute table. What we don't see in the attribute table is the data structure associated with the X and Y coordinates that make up these outlines here. Um, but, but we can find those if we want to. 
if we um, have an attribute table, such as this object, such as this um, attribute table for these two points here, they might just have an object ID associated with them if they don't have anything else in their attribute table. But we can use this command, add x and y coordinates, and we can add two new columns to the attribute table, and then it will actually give us the value of the x and y coordinates. So they're stored outside of the attribute table, but we can recall them or retrieve them into the attribute table if we like to.